Um, thank you so much for having me. It's just a real pleasure to join this really diverse group of experts, and I hope that we're all learning as much as I have tonight. Um, so my introduction was that I am an energy consultant working in the field of buildings, but I'm actually not going to really talk about buildings in this presentation. I want to talk about um, this graphic that's shown up here, which we use to help communicate what climate change means and why we need to consider it in our building design. So we'll get back to buildings at the very end, but kind of put them aside for now. And uh, there's a lot going on in this graphic. So my intention in this presentation is to kind of walk everyone up into understanding it with me, and hopefully at the end, you'll all nod at me and say, yeah, that is a really great graphic. I like it a lot. <laughs> so the first concept to understand is that of heating and cooling degree days. Um, this is a concept that engineers use to understand how hot or cold a location is. And in summary, it's basically the amount of thermal energy, either heating or cooling, you would need to maintain a stable and neutral temperature. So in this case, we're trying to maintain 18 degrees Celsius. And if you add up all of the red area in this graph, that's your heating degree days for the year. If you add up all the blue, that's the cooling degree days. So at a really high level, if there's a location with a lot of heating degree days, it's cold. If there's a lot of cooling degree days, it's hot. And that's really all you need to know. Um, the second component of this graphic is looking at Toronto's future weather. So in 2011, the city of Toronto commissioned a study uh, by a consultant firm, Sennis Consulting, and they uh, forecast the hourly weather of Toronto for 2040 through 2050. We wanted to take that information and kind of translate it into information into a format that makes sense to us as engineers in our office. So we calculated the heating degree days. And what you're looking at here is the heating degree days from Toronto Pearson Airport from 1953 forward to 2019 and then jumping forward from 2040 to 2050. So basically, if you remember that the more heating degree days you have, the colder it is. If we look forward at 2040, we have a lot less heating degree days. It's going to be a lot less cold in Toronto, according to the study. This is kind of dramatic to visualize like this, but um, it's a little bit hard to contextualize what that shift really means. So the third component of this graphic is the idea of climate zones. Um, I noted at the beginning that there were almost no architects and I, they didn't even ask about engineers. So uh, <laughs> engineering in North America is governed by this body, um, ASHRAE, the American Society of Heating, Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Engineers. They've taken the uh, heating degree days and cooling degree days, put them into ranges and called those climate zones. So across North America, they've divided the, all of the locations into general buckets of, of heating and cooling degree days. There's variations kind of locally here and there, but broadly speaking, everyone who's in climate zone eight has a really cold climate. Everyone who's in climate zone one has a very hot climate. And the rest of us are kind of somewhere in the middle. So what we did for our graphic, we've now come back to it, uh, is overlay onto our heating degree days the climate zone ranges that uh, these heating degree days fall into. I'm actually going to go backwards one slide and point out it's really small and grainy, but they put Toronto in the blue clim the pale blue climate zone six color. So on our final graphic here, if we start at the left, we have 1953. Uh, through 1985, you can see Toronto uh, Pearson weather is pretty solidly in climate zone 6, in that blue band. But as we move forward from there, between sort of 85 to the current day, we actually see that we've shifted into climate zone 5, which means that our weather has already gotten warmer. And then, continuing forward, <laughs> you see that 2040 to 2050 uh, prediction puts us in climate zone 4. So. Again, I'll back up a slide, but that is sort of Washington, D.C., Pacific Northwest. It's much less cold than even our current weather. The other thing that I want to point out is, even in that green band, I didn't actually mention this historical weather is like from Environment Canada. This is what actually happened. And you can see the heating degree days really bounces over kind of a four-year cycle. And what that tells us is not only has it gotten warmer, but it's gotten a lot weirder. So, 
to sum it all up, because I'm running out of time, the way that we use this graphic is to communicate to building designers, mechanical engineers, that yes, the climate is changing, it's gonna get a lot warmer, but yes, the climate has already changed, and we need to be making sure that we acknowledge that variability and that warmer climate when we're designing our buildings so that we don't have a year like last year where it's really cold and a year like this year where it's really not cold and we have people who are uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs>